are recording. Welcome to the Oral Ethnic and Oral History Committee meeting. This is January the 18th. So the question and is what day of the week is it? We will proceed with the script. As soon as I put my hands on that little goodie. If you need one, let me know. I've got one not too far away, Esther. Okay. Grace may have one. Grace, do you have a, a script for her? I can try to find one. Okay. I don't have it off on, on hand, though. Oh, here we go. I found the stack of papers. Okay. Yeah. I got one for you, too. To conduct this meeting wholly electronically, the Ethic and Oral History Committee needs to make certain findings for the record to evidence our compliance with all applicable laws. These motions address this compliance. First, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each member participating in this meeting to state your name, and your location. Lynn. Lynn Garvey Hodge, uh, Commissioner of Fairfax County History Commission um, at large, Commissioner. Subi Mendy. Uh, Subi Mendy, uh, Drainsville District, McLean. Tammy. Tammy Manorino from the Mount Vernon District. Phyllis. Phyllis Walker Ford, Lee District. Who else do we have? Are Cheryl. there others? I think it's just the. Oh, Cheryl. Cheryl. Cheryl, Cheryl Rapetti, Sully District. Sally. I don't think Sally's here. How about the. Uh, mine's gone blank. Are there any other members off? Tammy, Tammy. Oh, you got Tammy, right? I got Tammy. I was going to say, who's usually here? Barbara? Do yes. we have Dee Dee Carter? I will uh, come back around. We have a guest, D. Carter. D. D. Car Carter, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It, she We're is. happy to have a guest. Okay. But the guest is uh, participate only to view. At this point, I will pass the gavel to Cheryl. so that I may make the appropriate motions. I move that the Ethnic and Oral History Committee certify for the record that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of this board. I second the motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any, any nays or abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. Second, I move that the name, I mean, I move that the Ethnic and Oral History Committee certify that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this committee of uh, Ethnic and Oral History and the public to physically attend this meeting in person and the usual procedures do not be implemented safely or practically. As a result, I further move that the committee conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated uh, video and audio conferencing line and that the public may access this meeting by calling and 
Grace, can you help me with that? Yes. What is that number to call? Yes, let me just pull it up really quick. Okay, the phone number is 1571-429-5982. Phone conference ID 395-773-2000. Thank you very much. So that's my motion. Second. Oh. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions or uh, nays? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. Finally, I move that the Ethnic and Oral History Committee certify that the matters on its agenda today relate to the COVID-19 emergency itself and are necessary for continuity in Fairfax County government and or are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of the Ethnic and Oral History Committee lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Any abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. And I'll get that gavel back. Here you go. Thank you very much well greetings to everyone yes i apologize for being a little tardy because i had difficulty with the computer technology and that happens from time to time so i think i will switch to gmail for history business that might alleviate some of the problems the last meeting we had, we talked about several things, but the one thing I want us to concentrate on tonight are interviews. Our next scheduled interviews or the end of the month. So January 31st and February 1st. And as you know, those interviews go, uh, say, from 9.30 to 3.30, uh, an hour each, or 45 minutes to an hour each. And uh, we set schedules. I would send a letter to the person we're asking to be interviewed, and then they would respond. And let me know what time they want to be interviewed. So I did speak with Lynn previously, and she said she's available on the 31st, I can do 31st. to make interviews. Is there anyone that's available on the 31st or the 1st? So I'll know what I'm working with. Uh, I can do I can do the first Esther. Okay. Suki. And it's possible I'll be available on the 31st. I don't quite know my schedule yet. Okay. Give me a call or email me when you find out then. Esther, uh, looks like I'm available on the 31st, but I do have a program scheduled for the 1st. Oh, great. That helps a lot. 31st. And we don't know who our folks are yet, right? No, we don't know who our folks are. And that's another topic of discussion under this heading. Because we said we would uh, move to interviewing some of the citizens rather than just previous supervisors. I have one supervisor that I just got contact information from Carol. She uh, found out 
the information for contacting Joan Dubois. And I will get to her first and give her first dibs at times if she is available. If she's not available on those days and she's willing to be interviewed, I will make arrangements <laughs> with Channel 16. Now, the other thing I wanted to discuss with you is, should we move to interview citizens? As you know, uh, those of you that were in the committee before, the intent originally was to interview citizens, the oldest of the citizens and African Americans because they had not been interviewed at all, it seems. Things have changed. It's been a number of years and we find that uh, supervisors, we've kind of run the scope because some people might not be interested in being interviewed or participating. And I don't have a list of previous supervisors. Now, if you are aware of somebody, speak up, <laughs> let me know. Yeah, I was just thinking, I think there was, um, there's a gentleman, Farrell Eggert, who I think he was before Jerry Highland. I'm not sure how long he was a supervisor, but I, I think he's still around. What's that first name? Farrell. F E F. -F maybe it's F A R R E L. F A R R E L. Ecker. Okay. Do you think he is in which district? I think he's Mount Vernon district, okay. and I think he lives in Bellhaven, so I think he's still around. Okay, I'll call and find out if they have contact information. Yeah, anybody it is interesting else thing that they don't have a um, uh, they don't have a list somewhere. Esther, are you interested in any other names of former supervisors? Not former supervisors, but someone in the county. Or are we not quite at that point? Okay, well, we're at the point. I'm at the point of asking the committee how they want to proceed. Okay. This is our last two days of interviews. So I certainly want to give Channel 16 some interviews this round. So what do you think? Should we go to the citizenry? Well, I'll tell you somebody who I would really love to see an oral history done with is former mayor of Clifton, Jim Chesley. He's kind of gotten lost in the fray, but he was a the mayor for a number of years, uh, worked very closely with Elaine McConnell, who is someone who I would now wish we had done an oral history on. She's no longer with us. Um, but he lived in Clifton from the earliest, earliest days when it was first being gentrified okay. and kind of came up through the local citizenry ranks to be, I think, a three term mayor. Um, lives in a home that was once occupied by another Clifton mayor. So in terms of personal. Kind of continuous history in one historic location for a while, mm -hmm. I think he would be an outstanding candidate. But I, I don't want to move in that kind of a direction without the rest of a nod from from the committee. So what say ye committee? Do we move to uh, other former county employees? I think or that's a good city idea. Employees. I, I think um, like former former county officials. Um, I think former history commissioners. Um, you know, if, if there are some still around. Uh, oh, Naomi would be good. Naomi saw a lot. Mm -hmm. okay. Lynn Jones would be good too because she was one of the early African Americans on the history commission. Who do, who did you say, Gwen? Gwen Jones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have our contact information, Phyllis? Yes, I can email it to you. 
Oh, okay. If you could send that to me, that'd be great. I'll send her a letter. Because she was on the commission a couple of months after I joined. Yeah, she she and Edith Sprouse lived in the same um, senior complex. Oh, and my they, God. They were traveling back and forth to the commission meeting. Oh, okay. sure. All right. If you'll help me with that contact information, I'll drop her a letter. Okay, you want to use and your new email address? She yeah, she did. Map she for she the commission. Right. Do you okay. want Jake's contact information, Esther? For uh, Mayor of Clifton. Well, yes, I don't please email. I'll email it to you. My okay. brain is so fuzzy right now. Okay, let me make my email is great. Okay, but but what's your new Gmail address? Esther that... McCullough one at gmail e s t a g r m c c u l l o u g h one the number one at gmail great now i had some suggestions from a couple of former supervisors uh, Grace, can I share screen? Yes, you should be able to. Okay, great. <coughs> okay, now let's see, how is this done? So, open in share tray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then desktop window. Sometimes it gives you the option to share your entire desktop or specific things that you have open. A specific thing I have open. So did it come up? Not yet. No. Okay, so what do I do next? Is it giving you the options for desktop or like a Word document or a specific thing you have? It says choose what to share entire screen window Chrome tab. And is it in your window? Yeah, it has to be open on your desktop. Okay. At least, I, at least it does for um. It's all mm -hmm. WebEx and and uh, Zoom. And so Let's then you share and see what happens. There we go. It looks like that. Did might it come up? We oh. see us. A list. No. Uh, you say you've shared your desktop, which is open to to. So we're seeing a picture of us. There we oh, go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah. I had suggestions from Sharon Boulevard. She really got into it. Yeah. Um, we lost it. There you go. I have to keep on. I have to keep my <clears throat> cursor on it. I think you have to click on it so it's the top thing in your screen. Okay, let's see. Is it back? Uh, try one more. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah. There we there go. There we are. Okay. So she had Pete Murphy, longtime chair of the Planning Commission. He's are you familiar with any of these people? I yes. am. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Jay Lambert was suggested by Sharon as well as Dana Kaufman, Supervisor Dana Kaufman. Hmm. Tony Griffin who was, uh, he was the attorney, wasn't he? County executive. The executive, yeah. Okay, Ed Long. Yeah, Ed's been Frank, around for a long time. I remember him. Okay, Frank McDermott. Don't remember him. He's a developer, Tisha, so. Okay, Tisha Deegan. 
She was with Human Services. Mm -hmm. Dave Rohrer and Ed Rossler. And he just retired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think. Okay, former police chief. So what do you think about uh, approaching these folks? I think they're great. That's great ideas, especially because Sharon has a real most current insight to the mm -hmm. further past. Right. So uh, I will get back to her and ask her if she's got any contact information. And past that, I will go to uh, Jeff McKay's office to see if they have uh, contact information. Pete, mm -hmm. Pete Murphy still chairs the um, planning commission. Yeah, Murphy's active right now. Yeah. Oh, OK. So do we want someone that's still active? It might put, put them in a position that's uncomfortable mm. to talk about some things. Mm. Well, if we can ask, they can always say no. OK. OK. I, I, but I don't know. That's my opinion. Some of the other folks here might have a different, different perspective. Mm. Anybody else can have a comment? I, I think I think it still would be good for for Pete because he's he's always been outspoken and kind of fiery, so okay. he'll let you know yes. something fiery is great. Yeah. What he's going to talk about. Okay, so this this gives me a pool of of names to work yeah. with. That's great. If you think of somebody else, then then. Uh, email now oh, i was going to say esther i have the correct spelling of um the former supervisor for mount vernon his name was feral eggy so it's f-a-r-r-e-l-l -L. and his last name i was pronouncing it wrong his last name is eggy e-g-g-e oh and he was 1984 is when he was elected so he's He's probably around 80 now. So, um, but I believe he, I believe he lives in Bellhaven. So he's still around. Wow. Okay. Esther, he precedes us. Uh, yeah, about a year. <laughs> a year or two. Huh? Yep. Just teasing, Soupy. <laughs> You'll be trying to add that up and it won't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you see the questions we had for the Board of Supervisors? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. For those former county employees, uh, we can revise this. And instead of saying as supervisor, if there was some, something else put there, their position in there. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I think it should be. If we're going to no. send this to it to them, we need to document it up a bit to to. I would just call it Fairfax County Leader. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. That's a good idea. Hey, it might be interesting to um, interview longtime school principals too. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bet they'd have. I mean, they, you know, they're in a great position to talk about changes over the years. Now, let's think about this. We don't want to uh, rile the school board. <laughs> Some of the school board members might be mighty happy to talk, but. Um, <laughs> We won't go there. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we're ready to go there. Stephen uh, Colbert was the last county, time. We'll be safe. Yeah. Uh, uh, but just tweaking these questions, maybe not campaigning as much as concentrating on their work 
and what they did, what was memorable, what they witnessed, mm -hmm. and what they see for the future of the county. Yes. Okay. Anything else? I think, um, you know, it's in some ways, there's certain parts of the county that have its own little culture. Uh, <coughs> and if they want to put a voice to something like that, I don't know, that could also just go into kind of a miscellaneous question. Just OK, just, what is that question? If they have a sensitivity to a certain kind of culture, like Clifton, trust me, is its own kind of culture. Um, you know, to give them the opportunity to put a voice to that, but you know, okay, it's that, something that can be like, optional. Do yeah, you I think your community has a distinct culture? Okay, or cultural background? That could be. No, Clifton originally, this is obviously not in any books anywhere, but in the 19, late 60s, early 70s, it was heavily populated by a lot of young hippies that came in and regentrified the town. And so I know, for instance, with Jim, there would be lots of stories in that regard. And I know there were also lots of parties at that time. I don't know <laughs> if that make it into the oral history or not, but. Okay. Yeah. And there are communities that were back in the day african-american predominantly vienna and there were a lot of african-americans in clifton weren't there absolutely yeah okay well at one time that was back the in the hundreds. 40s 50s yeah, that was that well the back back at the end of the 19th century it was yeah Definitely. Yeah, after okay. slavery. Okay. Yeah. So there might be some distinct uh, distinctions there that would be interesting. That's good. Can you, you know, think of elderly citizens that should be interviewed at this point? Well, well Esther, can you just um, talk a little bit about the time frame? Um, so you said that we we're completing one cycle um, by February 1st. Is that what I understood? Let me get this down. Uh, what we're doing is completing the project. Okay, stop sharing. Does that bring me back? Um, I can't see you. I can only see four people. We can only see your initials, Esther. We can see, yeah. <laughs> Is you sure you have your camera on, hon? No, I have my camera on. Oh, do you? Okay. So maybe I'm still sharing. I told you to stop sharing. You're on as, okay, well, we're all guests. Okay. You're no longer sharing, but we can't um, see you. So does Teams have just a, a constraint on the number of people we can see on screen? No, no, no. no. no I, don't, I, I think there's something that just didn't get clicked on when, when Esther came through. It's Let's a little see. confusing. Now it says turn camera. OK, now am I back? No. Somehow it turned the camera off. I just clicked to turn it back on. I had the same problem when I first came in, Esther, and I had to go out and come back in. Oh, no. We, we so, can't yeah. do that. <laughs> <laughs> so our, our goal is to complete these interviews. We've had three sessions, Subi, mm -hmm. where we had a couple of days to do interviews. And channel 16 is more or less uh, dedicating certain times to this. So we're on their schedule. This is the last 
of those interviews that we'll be doing. So we only need a handful to fulfill the, the goal. And then we move to setting the example by doing some kind of uh, some kind of presentation that goes out into the county. So was our intent to get a cross section of the society or just did we have this discussion? I mean, no. if it's okay. Yeah, no. pretty much. Uh, Subi. I'm sorry, go ahead, Esther. Our intent was to do a number of interviews to be examples of how to do them. Oh, I showed the citizen groups, the communities, okay. how they could do interviews. OK, OK. And, and instead of getting a cross section, it was suggested by one of the commissioners at a meeting, which I wasn't there, but he suggested that we start with the supervisors. Mm. And the commission agreed to that. So when I came to the next meeting, I found out that's what we were doing. And that's why we're we're starting with the supervisors. Uh, OK, so uh, um, how many have we done so far? Mm. We've done five or six. It's not a big number. So I've done two. So how many do we need to have a robust sample of examples? Three or four would be great. Please. So yeah. that means we have met our goal if we have done five or six. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. for that purpose, Subi. Well, so that's what forget. I'm asking. What is the purpose? What is the goal here? To collect history from the past. But that's not what Esther said. Esther said to, to have an example of how to do this. Well, that's the second part. That's the second reason why we did this. The first one, obviously, because this is a history commission, was to get history from the past. Well, in that so, case, I think we do need a cross section and not yes, just supervisors yeah. or public leaders. So I would suggest uh, a ch church, church leaders, um, school principals, definitely. Um, and my, my my next question would be, when do we want to complete this? Is it by February 1st? Yes, this, this batch, yes. This, batch. this this part of it is controlled by Channel 16 schedule wise. At first, I thought we'd be able to do enough interviews to have a TV program was the goal from Channel 16. But they spread it out in months, you know, over the year. It was every three months that we got a chance to do it. So if we could complete this part that's being uh, televised by Channel 16, then we can move on to the cross section and, and, uh, okay and really deal with it more because the goal is to have the communities do the interviews. We're a busy commission, so mm -hmm. we will be able to get every citizen that needs to be interviewed quickly. Right, and so since we started down the path of doing supervisors, it's kind of good to get to a point where we feel like we've completed all the ones we're going to yes. get. Or, correct, so, correct. So that's another yes. aspect and, of the And goal. that's why we said move to county employees, former county employees, so that the cross section would be a part of the community uh, activity. They would be doing the, the community interviews from each district. Does that kind of answer what you're asking, Subi? No, I'm not very clear about. So if you go, if, if the next year would be uh, county employees, we are still looking at public servants. Yes. Uh, 
when do we get out of that? So do we want to complete the public servants by February 1st and then do the others in the community later? So I think it's a matter of semantics. We're talking about community in a different ways. I think the yes. senior community leaders are the ones we need to do first. And I, as a part of this, as you can imagine, Subi, is the reality of age and attrition. Um, we've already lost some very important senior leaders in this county. So part of what I know um, in our earlier Ethnic and Oral History Committee meetings, we wanted to tap the people that have been here for a very long window of time. So yep. there's there's that piece. I think the cross section makes a lot of sense. Hopefully, Subi, to accomplish that as part of the existence of this committee would be as the years unfold, would be to continue to dive deeper and dive deeper and dive deeper. Okay. Okay. No, right. I, I okay, I get it. Th thanks. I get I get it now. Yeah. So February first is an end for this portion this level of county employee participation and channel 16 at this point. Okay. Now, if they offer to do something else, film something else for us, then we can talk about that. But this is the end of that project. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. okay. And right. then are we waiting for, um, I mean, we haven't we haven't shared these interviews yet, right? They haven't been broadcast. Right. They have been out there. Oh, have they? I don't know how much broadcasting there has been. Lynn, do you know? I think it's been relatively limited. I know Jerry Conley wanted to see his pretty early on. One of the thoughts I had, and Subi, this would be important for you to um to be thinking about, is that we have a separate tab on our uh, Pepper's County History Commission page for oral history so people could go there and click and see these histories that we've already done. And while I'm thinking about that, Subi, um, somebody just went to our History Commission page that's a local historian and told me that the last history conference that was live streamed was not accessible on that. I thought we had down, mm -hmm. had that down, down. Yeah. But, we did. Um, I'll, I'll I'll check again. But yeah, yeah. if you don't mind, Chuck yeah. Morrow said he yeah. he really wanted to watch it and he was not able to. So technology he was there. Yeah, that'd be good to know. But Esther, don't you think that makes some sense for the history commission to have like a tab or something that they could see these other oral histories? Because I'm yes. not sure where we would post it other than the main Fairfax County home page but even yeah, then well, it, that's those things that could get lost our page the history page is that what you're saying mm -hmm. that's what i'm saying just okay. do the conferences okay. there to have. right how is and, channel and 16 introducing them now if they're if they're running them in spots how how are they introducing them or are they just putting them out there i'm not sure i've never seen it yeah i'm th i think that's a good question to ask them um just because okay. if they if they are out there um we could just we'll link think to them. them we want to well we want to make sure that they're being introduced in a way that we get credit for them <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah no i will tell you the beginning of the oral histories they all begin that way the Who person do who's doing the um interviewing for instance, I was having Lynn Garby Hodge. I'm a commissioner of the Fairfax County History Commission. Right. So the commission gets immediate acknowledgement. So that part, I think, is in place. Oh, I was. And, and I think all over it, des place. it deserves a, a an introduction to the whole thing. Once Correct. They combine I them, agree. I agree. A couple of paragraphs, and I told uh, Pam, the contact there, that I I do that. So okay. I'll be wordsmithing that and sending that to you to tweak. Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. So if you have suggestions on how we introduce this, this this is something I'm interested in. Yeah. Uh, don't we already have a blurb? I think I've seen a blurb somewhere about the oral history um, project. 
Uh, uh, just... In the annual report, I might have. Yeah, we could just look at that <laughs> and cycle or, you know, mm -hmm. do something, refurbish. Okay. okay. So the goal tonight was really, and I apologize for not getting an agenda to you, uh, but goal was really to deal with this portion of it and complete the channel 16 scheduling. Uh, so the next steps are that I would contact whoever I need to to get contact information for these persons that we have listed uh, and continue to take suggestions. Mm -hmm. Because if they're not interviewed by us, they really should be interviewed by their uh, representative in their community. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. can I get someone to wordsmith a letter that lets the supervisor for his or her district know that we're encouraging interviews? And that they should be thinking about, you know, the citizens that need to be interviewed. Ah, okay. I get what you're what you're saying. For the um, next step you and mean. someone to interview them. In other words, we've got to pass this on to the communities. Correct. And some of them are already doing this. Phyllis, you've got someone in your area that's doing interviews, don't you? In in Lee District? Yes. Um, not that I know of. The, there's a there's an interview project for the um, descendants of the enslaved at Mount Vernon. There are about okay. 50 people that are going to be interviewed. But that those interviews are being done by uh, descendants of the enslaved. Okay. Well, each, that's each member has about five people that they're that they're interviewing. Hmm. You know, well, the see, group we would want these deposited in the library so that everyone could have access to it. What happens in this county is that things go on in this district that nobody over here knows about. Yeah. There, there are a number of interview projects that are going on. Um, yeah, I know Vienna and and some of them have projects. Um, and of course, Naomi went all out on her project. Right, she was across the county. Right. Um, but Tammy, <clears throat> the oral, aren't there oral history interviews that are going to be done at the community centers? That's part of, is that part of the history right. project? That's part of the history marker project. Well, it's, I was going to say it's not part of the history marker project. It's part of a larger thing that includes these um, these oral histories that, um, from what we understand at this point, they're going to be done at the community centers. So, right. That's, that's they, they don't have to be. So, so yes, yeah, so the community centers are making their video studios available. Um, to folks who want to do a video oral history, but they're also collecting whatever, you know, sort of history uh, materials, including typewritten, you know, oral histories uh, that could be submitted to the website. So it's as part of the, and that's specifically focused on African American experience. Mm -hmm. What happens with those when they're completed? What's the, the end game? The, the library. Um, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and the, with the videos, um, and and we might face this as well because if if Channel sixteen and Channel sixteen doesn't particularly host a lot of, you know, doesn't have like a back catalog of videos, um, and so if you want a video from them and you want to hold on to it, you have to get them to you have to download it. Uh, and so you, you have the physical copy of it and then put it in some sort of repository, whether it be the library, um, our website, or uh, like a YouTube uh, channel. The History Commission could potentially have its own um, right. video channel. Oh. 
-hmm. uh, and we could put the videos on there because I suspect that um, they might be too large for our website, but I'm, I don't know for sure. So we could figure that out, find that out. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Well, and you know, in our um, African American history inventory, you know, I went out in the Mount Vernon district to try to find oral histories that already existed. And so I pointed to those, you know, in that inventory, the ones that I knew about. Now I'm not gonna pretend like it's complete, but, um, but it, it just points to the things that are held in separate repositories because it's never, let's be realistic, it's never all going to be in one. Um, That's but, right. but it's important to know, you know, to have pointers to where these things are so that when people are looking for oral histories, they know the different places that are going to hold them. And, and that, I, that I, would be great. Esther, you know, let's also remember about our advocacy committee. You know, this is a perfect opportunity for us to tandem with them, given that their goal is to get the word out as to what we do on the History Commission. And I, I, I think they would be great um, spokespeople for us and just information distribution. I, I, I don't know, that just kind of, I don't know what the rest of you kind of think of that, but. It is, that's what we're wrestling with on advocacy is, uh, is, you know, what avenues do yeah. we have for sharing information? And it's not always an easy answer. Um, yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Well, so we can't just okay, go so out and share the, any way we want. You're <laughs> well, on that committee. Right. But they're yeah. meeting Thursday night, and I just didn't want to lose an opportunity here if that was possible. Mm -hmm. Cami, you're on that committee? Yes. Yeah. yeah, me too. Okay, great. Right. Also. Right. So, any other ideas about how we end Channel 16's interviews? The goal right now is to just get the interviews <clears throat> scheduled. Mm -hmm. And I will communicate <laughs> with the uh, committee when I do get someone that's interested in being interviewed. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Oh. I've lost vision of Subi. <laughs> Not that I'm accessible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. This is crazy. <laughs> I can only see four people. <laughs> yeah, I can only see four people. Yeah. Well, oh, you're interested in okay. a tiny one down in the corner. Well, I'm the tiny one in the corner. Yeah. Can you see yourself, Esther? Yes, I see myself in the corner. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. interesting. That's very interesting. No, but why can't we see her? That's so funny. Okay, I turned the camera off. Now I've turned the camera on. Interesting. Oh. Okay, that's a mystery in life. <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> so, unless, let's see, what else did I want to share? Oh, these were some questions that we were working on for the citizens. Do you see these? You have to share that. Okay personal background, social life, politics. So it goes in in uh, categories and it would be up to the uh, interviewer to make it flow. Mm -hmm. um, Esther, do we have any questions about their education background? Yes, there, okay. there are several pages here. Okay communications, merit life and children, transportation, holidays, school and occupation. Uh, then just some general questions like, how did you shop, sports, and how do you see life today? What's the biggest change you've seen over the years? So you get some sense of, their longevity, so to speak. 
you know, it'll be very interesting because I think all a lot of the questions or a lot of the answers will be really, really influenced by the pandemic. As life is so different the last two years. That's true. Oh, yeah. Yes, I agree. That's true. Yeah, it definitely uh, sheds a different light on things. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, to put a question about the pandemic and how it's affected you wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, that's true. I mean, you'll be capturing history uh, right in the moment. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. So towards the question. end, put question. something like, how has this this pandemic in the last two years affected you? Or what do you see? What changes do you see? Mm -hmm. Okay, under life today, I'll add something. But these are just suggestions because the interviewer would have to uh, more or less bring it down to uh, what is doable because you have to read the person that's being interviewed sure yeah yeah and if they don't want to talk about a certain thing then well that's why we get to... questions ahead of time too yeah oh yeah definitely and in fact hope there is someone if they're very elderly someone is close to them that would help them with the questions, you know, discuss them beforehand. So, do you envision that, that we, these are um, going uh -huh. to be video interviews that the public will be doing, or taped interviews, or any lots of different kinds of media? I mean, I, I can see us putting these questions along with some suggested instruction, you know, tips, you know, for, for interviewing on our website. And that's, you know, yes. some, how we would encourage people to go out and do this. Um, yes, some guidelines. A, yeah, um, so the guidelines and, and, and the set of questions. Mm -hmm. um, but then what do they do once they've done the interview? Do they send it to us? Do they send it to the library? Do we have a place for this? So I think so we have our draft guidelines. Um, I, I think Esther may have sent it out uh, yeah. in that we say to uh, submit them to the Virginia room. OK, yes. yes, I don't think we want them. OK. The, the interviews that the Miss Springfield's take. kids did were are at the library uh, mm -hmm. and you can actually access them. Mm -hmm. and, and what they what the what those two students did was they did, they did a written narrative, sent that back to the person that they interviewed to make sure that they were covering everything or, or was there something that they may want to add. And then, because the, they did them on Zoom, and so the, the written narrative and the Zoom recording is mm -hmm. that is that for, uh, for changing room. Very cool, yeah. Yeah, Zoom will, will yeah. transcribe it for you, so that's good. yeah. Okay. So do we want to make that a part of the interview tips that they would, you know, asking somebody to transcribe is, is a job. Hmm. I think, I think it's already there in the gui uh, draft guidelines that I did a um, couple of months ago, Ed, sir. I think okay. we have to look at it and Tammy sent some very good uh, edits to it. Uh, but maybe for next month's meeting, we could take a look at it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's a good suggestion. So next month, now it's very, very difficult to know how to how to schedule a meeting when you don't have the members inputting. Uh, their concerns about the meeting night. <laughs> I think all you can do is the best you can, Esther. Just set it and go forward. Yeah. 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 I think okay. so. 
So the 15th of February or the 22nd of February or Tuesday nights. Lynn, when do you have your uh, history conference meeting in February? Let me see what I was thinking of. We would likely do it on the 23rd, so I think would be good on the 22nd, Esther. It's just that we're requiring uh, assistance from the county rep. Right. And I'd hate to have, you know, Grace two nights in a row. Mm -hmm. It's an inconvenience, it's I think. Well, let's Could make sure it gets paid for this, right? Grace, yes. I don't know. get paid. Yes, I get, I get paid. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So that's all right, huh? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Grace. I've got three meetings this week, so two shouldn't be an issue. Oh, okay. How about the twenty-second <laughs> group? Sounds good. Okay. Oh, okay. Sounds good. All right. So mm -hmm. I will let you know when I get persons to be interviewed and their preferred times and dates. But just pencil in the 31st and or 1st mm -hmm. for activity. Yeah. Anything else? OK, so. Yeah, right now, Esther, first 31st and I think the 1st of February. Oh, okay. uh, for me, except I have a early I have a 730 morning meeting on the first okay we would need you before afternoon then <laughs> we'll give um, you the morning yeah you can have your morning but on the 31st though i'm cool oh okay thanks and of course i will ask other commissioners uh I think that's a great idea available. because the more that we get involved, the, the more momentum we can have with this. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in my report, I will ask for other commissioners that are available those dates. Yeah. Any other suggestions? I think that's it, Esther. Okay. Well, I we're think glad so. to have our visitor. And uh, yeah, Grace, Dean. thank you very much. I'm yeah. going to request that my email be changed so <laughs> so I can uh, alleviate the AOL problem, maybe with Gmail. Um, uh, Esther, this is Subi. Could you send uh, us an email with your email address? Because uh, the website will need to be updated as well. Yes, yes, certainly. I will do that. Oh, that's right. Denise is going through and updating everybody's emails too, I think. Yeah, definitely. Right. Sure she gets it. OK, fantastic. Thank you so much. You've been a very attentive audience. <laughs> And I hope it didn't take up too much of your time. 807. OK, this is a right. good time. Just, you know, it would be so cool if we could finish our monthly meetings at 807. <laughs> <laughs> just a thought, just a thought. Three more. New Year's resolution. OK, I'll make that motion. You're Talk here. less, <laughs> smile more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much. I appreciate your attendance. Okay, good night. And I'll everybody. keep you posted right. by email. Good night, everybody. It's good to see everyone. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Yes. Okay. Thank good you. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> good night, Grace.